Praise the Lord. It's so great to be here. Hallelujah. Now, those of you watching online, I know that you may think that what is happening because all the churches look exactly the same, you know, from the camera, except you are there physically. But um, I'm, right now, we have Next Level Sunday in Harvesters International Christian Center. And Tony Campus. Praise the Lord. So it's going to be a very powerful time. All of you in the physical space, thank you for coming. We're going to have a mighty time by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, before we have our seat, can you just let's really appreciate and celebrate our campus pastor? And... Uh, Praise God. We can't just but thank God for his dynamism, his faith, and not just of him, of all of our pastoral leaders, you know, from Pastor Kame to Pastor K. I mean, all of them. They, if I go one, 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 trust me, thank God there are more services. So I'm going to go more in the other services. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we worship your holy name. Will you lift up your hands towards heaven and thank him? Bango sovrenke tesh to vrektike suze vene petoshe vrekete sizemante. Soboroto kosh de kiba so kabalida barunde kisho praktikis go praktina. Neva roke patojish to ke manon rezizo praktikes go prakto ludi saha. Shade mantasi kapala manteze meneke praktesis to prakaderezkos. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. 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 We thank you. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for your love and your kindness. Sabali kepera da shila bako satala barati kaponde raniata. Hora Yisa Zeus in Posha Kizo Practico Menas Covantia Lemanta Koshe Paradona Masus Kepato Latika Pasha Kapora Manakumanaya. Where is like God our God, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always doing wonders? Shetu Panekova Nashkapato Masopena Kamandola Patiana Liva Shutaki Paratola Mansko Practicaya. Thank you because you love your people. Thank you because of the abilities of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the word of God that gives lies. Oh Shamana Kabaya. Esotala Bakumen Eske Practice Stojeli Practica Practicasa. Thank you because we're not going the same way. Thank you because we're not going the same way. Thank you because we're not going the same way. Thank you because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the perfect work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you for mercy that never fails. She come and sula mataya. Shabara bakumena sabatia. Luce panto pe shone bakumana. Neina hana masiha. Ode masata na bande kebaya. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Can I have more volume on this microphone? Glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. On and on to do. Voice in praise. like you there is no one like you for you are glorious for you are glorious oh God for you are glorious for you are glorious for you are glorious oh, 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 oh. oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus the Bible says there is no other name by which man can be saved. He said except in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you because beyond ourselves you have shown us mercy. You have shown us grace. Thank you for what you've done and thank you for what you are doing. Oh God we worship you. We thank you. We thank you for mighty proofs of your name. Mighty proofs of your power. We thank you for the mighty ministry of the Holy Spirit. At work in and through us oh God. We rejoice because you are a good God. We rejoice because you are a faithful God. We rejoice because you are a kind God. There is no other name than the name of Jesus. We well, thank you because you love us. Irrespective of us, even through our imperfection, you keep on showing us mercy. For this we are grateful. For this we are grateful. For this we are grateful, oh God. For this we are grateful. For this we are grateful. For this we are grateful. We are grateful, oh God. We are grateful, Father. Oh, we are grateful, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We honor you. We give you praise. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, we're praying. Thank you, Father. There's someone watching. You're watching online and you have a lump. You have a growth on the part of your body. It's, it's a lump. And right now, the Spirit of the Lord is healing you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The soul in this service, there is a discharge you have from a part of your body. Right now, put your right hand on your chest. And that chest, discharge is going to cease. I command it to go in Jesus' name. I command it to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, you may have your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
wow, the way the timer is, I'm not going to be able to see it. And if I don't see it, that can be a challenge because I can keep preaching and keep preaching and keep preaching. Then first service will become second service and first service will become third service. Amen. Amen. So I don't know if you can help me move it into a place where I can. It's just directly behind the cameras, so I'm not able to see it. Glory to God. Wow. It's been a minute that I've been here. It's been, a, it's been a minute. It's been a minute I've been here. What are you, first? So it's nice to see you. It's nice to see. I don't want to be greeting people because that's going to take some more time. <laughs> that's going to take some more time. You know, that's going to take some more time. God is good and kind. God is good and kind. God is good and kind. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. There is a lady you, you've been trying to have a child and you, the medical diagnosis are not good. And they, you were told that medically it would be practically very difficult or impossible to have a child. The Spirit of God is working on you right now. Yeah. And this is how you will know. This year you are getting pregnant. Yeah. And it will be beyond what the doctors had ever thought about. Yeah. Because it will be purely supernatural. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Let's turn in our Bibles quickly. Mm. There's so much to share. You know, because, you know, just by divine orchestration, our fasting and prayer starts this week. Glory to God. So, it's great for me to also be able to speak into the season we're stepping into. So from September the 1st, we will have 21 days of breakthrough. We used to call it glory to God. No, 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 no. I don't know how pastor has trained you, but when I speak, you have to respond. All right. Praise the Lord. Oh, I see the reason why. Because the choir does not respond. Yeah, that's the reason why. Because Joshua, so you are here and you're not responding. Uh, you and Abbey, you sat down like principalities and powers. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. So, um, so from September the first, we will be fasting for twenty-one days. Uh, yes, we will be fasting for twenty-one days. And one of the key things you want to see is that as the year comes to an end, people begin to give up, people begin to lose faith, people begin to just say it's all over. But in this season, we use it to recharge and stir up ourselves and believe that there will be no carryover. Amen? Amen. And the theme of the 21 days, we normally call it 21 days of research, which is spiritual renewal, but it's all encompassing now. It's 21 days of breakthrough. Amen. Glory to God. Let me explain what 21 days of breakthrough means. 21 days of breakthrough means, this is very powerful, breakthrough does not mean that I get something. I know that's how people think about it. Breakthrough really means we move into a new dimension. That's what breakthrough means. So that's what breakthrough means, that we move into a new... So when medicine say there's a medical breakthrough, it's not something happened. It's the fact that something that had not been achieved in medicine before has now been achieved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bible to Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. So, sometimes when people want to go far in life, one of the things, because I, I get this popping sound, is it because the microphone is close to my mouth? Yes, you want, do you want to help me? I should just pull it away. Is that good now? Okay, maybe you'll help me fix it later. So, sometimes... 
the difference between someone that does very well and someone that doesn't do very well could be direction. Direction is very powerful. People think that speed is important. But speed in the wrong direction is useless. So, if you are going to Lokoja and you face the road to Abuja, even if you got to Abuja on time, you've got it to the wrong place. And the reason I'm saying so is that as much as people want speed, maybe the first thing they want to really get in their life is direction. Because direction will ensure that you are at the right place. You are on the right path at the right time. And the reason I'm saying so is that this is a season where some people feel that this is how some people feel. I'm behind other people. And understand the feeling. They look at the family members, they see where their brother is, where their cousin is, where their schoolmates are, and they're wondering, why am I here? I should be way ahead of where I am. And I understand that. Sometimes it's the fact that it's the fact that you know you look behind and you see all the people you started business with. And all of them have begun to do 10 million. They began to do 20 million. Some of them have even bought their first house. And you are still struggling to pay your rent. And all of a sudden, what comes to your mind is that I need a lot of speed. Sometimes it's the fact that you just go through Instagram and Facebook. And you just notice all your friends are married. And you wonder, what in heaven is wrong with me? You go to Facebook and see all the grandchildren doing well and you wonder but my own child is not yet married my own child isn't doing well me and the mother i want to see my grandchildren and when you're in this kind of state one of the things you want to do is to really pray that god will give you speed but before god gives you speed why not ask for clarity because you may be praying in the wrong direction May you not climb the wall <laughs> that you are meant to live alone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because, they, listen, the way God is, eh, there are battles you don't fight, you walk away from. Yes, you know, sometimes when you read the Bible, God will tell them, don't fight this battle. See, you don't understand, if the Lord of hosts have never lost a battle before, yes. tells you not to fight a battle. Is it not wisdom not to fight the battle? Yes. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. So, clarity is very important. Why is, and how do we get clarity? Because sometimes, let me tell you why clarity is very important. Sometimes, someone is praying, you know, sometimes, without clarity, you can't fix it. I met a lady, maybe eight or nine years ago, and um, her stomach was growing big. So, I was going to pray for her. I said, what did the doctor say is wrong? He said, that's the problem, sir. He said, for the past three or four years, this stomach has been growing big. I've gone to the hospital. Doctor said, there's nothing in your stomach. He said, because there's nothing in your stomach, we cannot treat you. This is the power of direction. This is why when you go, for, when you go, for, when you go to the hospital, the first thing they do is that they run tests. Because they need to know what to treat. The thing is this, you are praying, but do you know what to pray about? You are saying, hey, I'm expressing delay. Are you sure you're expressing delay? Because some people are not expressing delay. They're just in preparation. And they're just putting themselves under unnecessary pressure, for, you know, ahead of time. And if they're not careful, they will jump ahead of destiny. You know, I said to someone, I said, if you don't know your timing, how can you know if you're delayed? I'll give an example. If I got here late... And someone said, Pastor B, you, Pastor Balaji, you delayed me. You only delayed me because there was a pre-assumed agreed time that I will get here at 9 p.m. But if I say come on Sunday and you come at 1 and I come at 5, did I delay you? No, because we didn't agree on anything. So when people say they are delayed, the question is, that, do you know your timing? Because by destiny, some people will marry early, some people will marry late. So, when someone that should marry at 33 looks at 28 and says, I'm delayed, you are not delayed. You are just putting yourself under pressure. You know why? Because in his time, he makes all things beautiful. In his time, he makes all... See, let me tell you something.
Some people are not called to start a business. Some people are meant to partner with people that have businesses. Some people are meant to invest in businesses. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur. Not everybody has a grace for it. And until you stay in the place of grace, you experience this grace. Until you learn to stay. Listen, when you are young, that is the only time you think the race is to the swift. As you grow older, you will look back and say, all oh, these people we thought in secondary school not do well. They are the ones that are becoming big boys and big girls. All the ones that they call senior prefect, junior prefect, big boy, big boy. All of them are nobodies. You will not realize the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. It's God that showeth mercy. No wonder Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Hey, say with me, may wisdom not look like foolishness to me. It's a big prayer. That's how people lose money. When, see, nobody plans to lose money. But when they want to make, lose, when they want to invest, it looks like wisdom, but it's total foolishness. It's when they put the money inside, it will now occur to them that this is foolishness. Direction. Why is direction important? Just one change can bring about your testimony. And this is, let me tell you, this is the reason why we fast and pray. Because fasting and prayer brings clarity. Yes. Uh, let me read something to you. Uh, we're trying to read 2 Timothy 4 verse 11. See what it says. 2 Timothy 4 verse 11. It says this. Only look is with me now. Take Mark and bring it with me. This is the same Mark that ran away. And Paul had the sharp disagreement over. He says, let me give you the background. Mark had gone on the first mission trip in Acts of the Apostles. But at certain point, when Mark saw the difficulty of the mission field, Mark ran back. And Barnabas, you know, well, when they were going on the second mission trip, Barnabas says, let us take Mark with us. Then Paul says, I will not take Mark with them. The agreement was so strong that that caused a shift in, the, in, what, in that ministry partnership. All of a sudden, many years later, see what Paul himself is saying. Paul says this in verse 11. He says that only Mark is with me, take Mark, uh, only Luke is with me, take Mark, and bring him to me. Why? For he is profitable for me for the ministry. Why am I saying that? There are things you could have done before that's failed. Does not mean you should not do them, only that you were doing them out of timing. But now is the time to do them again. Are you here? This is the power of clarity. This is the power of clarity. You know, some, someone says, you know, Pastor, uh, you know, I, I tried to change my job before I just got rejection. I tried to buy a house. I lost money. I understand that. But listen, sometimes the fact that I didn't work in time pass does not mean you are not meant to do it. There is timing in this issue. There is process in this issue. So the same mark that was not profitable then, Paul now said by the Spirit, listen, he had not seen mark. But through clarity, he had discerned something. He said, bring Mark for he is now profitable for the work of the ministry. You know what I'm saying? So, many of you need to realize this. There are things you must get involved in right now that you did not get involved in then. Because now is a season to bring about profits. I'm telling you. Now is a season. Now is a season it will bring about profits. He said, bring Mark for he is now profitable for the work of the ministry. There was a time, there was a time, you know, you know, if you're familiar with our ministry, there was a time we're planning international meetings. But no matter how much you plan international meetings, it just never worked. But when the fullness of time came, yes. as we planned it, the places and the kind of result that we did not expect, he began to spring forth. God began to use us as a frontier for nations, for other people to do the same things we are doing. Let me say something to you. There are times you entered a relationship that did not work. And you now say, I will never do it again. No. It was the timing that was wrong. But now, if you can hear by the Spirit, God is now saying that, now go back into it. Are you hearing me? There was a time you did investment that you lost money. It's okay. But the same mark that was a loss, the same mark Paul said, bring because it's not profitable. The question to you is this. Are you able to sense the season to bring mark back into your house? 
And what fasting and prayer does is that, please, you need to help me with the timer. It's been blank. You need to help me with it. You know, what fasting and prayer does is this. In the place of fasting and prayer, we get clarity. Very powerful. In the face of fasting and prayer, we what? We get clarity. Sometimes because of, you know, the things I do, there's a lot of demand. Some will want me to pray for this, come here, do this, do that. And I myself must be able to sense by the Spirit what the Lord wants me to do. Because if I don't sense that, I will not be able to have maximum return on my time. So why do we fast and pray? Because of clarity. One of the, one of the powerful words in Acts of the Apostles is this. Paul says, Paul said this in Acts of the Apostles. He said, haven't assuredly gathered. I love the word. He says, haven't gathered with assurance that this was God, what God wanted us to do. Clarity. I want to ask you a question. You know where you're going to do now together. The question is that fasting and prayer gives you what? That clarity. Many of you think the reason why you're not married is because of a demonic walk. But the truth is that your mouth is not good. Can I be honest? It's not a matter of demonic walk. If you just talk less, you will marry soon. But it takes the Spirit of God to show you that this is a problem. It takes the Spirit of God to show you this is a problem. Clarity. Clarity is very, very powerful. Clarity, just to know that this is what the Spirit of God is saying. Many of you, you want to leave your job. Is this the time to leave your job and move to Canada? Clarity. You know what I'm saying? So, some people will move to Canada and do well. Some people will move abroad and enter a trap. I know someone that moved to London and return back as a madman. True life story, Nigeria. In fact, they saw him on the road and brought him back. It's not as if moving is bad, but is this your path for my life? One, is it the time? Is it what I should do? Is it the time? Why do we fast and pray? Fasting and prayer gives us what? Clarity. Can, can, can we go deeper? Did you notice about Ruth? All the while she was married to her first husband, did you notice she didn't have a child? It didn't occur to you that Ruth, all the while she was married to her first woman, she had a child. A blessed woman in one location. Her destiny opened up when she connected to Boaz. She did not just have a child, she, she entered the, the lineage of Jesus Christ. If someone has seen Ruth ahead of time, someone will have said she's wasting her time. Because there's a process to things. You would think that, many of you think you're not smart. It's not that you're not smart, you're in the wrong place. It's not as if you're, oh, <laughs> oh my God. I'm telling you, if you take a lion into water, he will look like a useless animal. Because he's in water. But when you take a lion into the jungle, he becomes a king. It's not as if you're not smart, you're just in the wrong place. Change location and see the glory of God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, change location and see the glory of God. Look at Ruth. Ruth was with her first husband. They, they suffered. They didn't have... Because many of you never took notes that the Bible never had record that Ruth had any child. As a matter of fact, not that the Bible, she didn't have a child. The reason why is that when the mother-in-law was going, what's her name now? Naomi. Naomi. When Naomi was leaving, Naomi said that go back to your father's house. He said, I have nothing to offer you. He said, there's no child, there's no husband, there's nothing. And if you're a Christian, you'll be wondering, ah, how can I be in this business and there's nothing? How can I be in this location? There's nothing. How can I be in church? There's nothing. Then all of a sudden, she got the word, go with Naomi. As she went with Naomi, Oprah returned, and that was the end of her destiny. Biblically, Oprah's destiny has no record in the future. But what happened to Ruth was this. The moment Ruth connected, I want to take note of this. The moment Ruth connected, and how did he connect? Connected to Naomi and went to Joe. Um, married Boaz. The Bible says they had a child. And that child became the, I think, the great grandfather of who? Of King David. And Jesus Christ came from the lineage of what? Of David. That was how Ruth 
became one of the few women in history that was a non-Jew that entered into the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be careful of being in the wrong place or being at the right place at the wrong time. How do you know clarity? Some of you think you lost money. God only protected you. I'm telling you. Some of you, you are using prayer to fight against God. I'm telling you, what you think is you are using prayer to fight against God because God is protecting you, but you are praying about it. Not all closed doors are from the devil. Some closed doors are the direction of a bigger door. But how do we sense? The way we sense this thing is this. By staying in the place of prayer, we are able to discern the will of God part time. You know, um, Reverend Sam was sharing with me many years ago. He said he was applying for visa. He applied several countries they didn't give him. And particularly, he now applied to Kenya. And he said, ah, oh, Kenya embassy, they will give you visa. He said, on his surprise, the Kenya embassy rejected him. He said, the UK, I think they have rejected him multiple times. In fact, there was a time I was going to apply. He told all their pastors to fast and pray for three days on visa. He said, they returned my passport with an anointed no. He said, he said, ah. he said all of us fasted and prayed this was about the fourth or fifth time. He said, when they brought back the passport, they said, what will you do? He said, no. With the prayer we have prayed, it's not God. It's not Satan. It's God. Ah. He said, there's no way Satan can resist these things. He said, it's God. Let me tell you something. When you see resistance that does not answer to prayer, step back and say, Father, are you sure you're not the one that is here? Because sometimes God is redirecting you. It's like Balak the prophet on the horse and the angel appeared before the donkey. And Balak was trying to force his way and the angel says, can't you see that the angel of God is before him with a sword drawn in his hands? And let me tell you something. No matter how stubborn you are, the will of God will prevail. Glory to God. So one of the thing, the one of the key things you must take away from here is this. Someone says, why do we fast and pray? We fast and pray, number one, for clarity. So that we can see better. Lord, my child. Some of you have a problem with your older child. Lord, this my older child. How do I deal with him? He's struggling with this problem. How do I deal? I've been diagnosed with cancer. How do I? It's, let me, and I will say this here. Some of you watch the messages online, and if you don't, please go back and watch it. I normally talk about a concept of prayer, and nobody taught me this prayer. The Lord himself taught me this prayer, about the prayer of inquiry. It's not something you'll find documented anywhere. What is the prayer of inquiry? And I learned it from Mark chapter 9. The Bible says this. This is what the Bible says. That the apostles had ca- tried to cast out demons from a child. Come on, go in, come on, go in, come on, go in, come on. The demons not go. Then they brought the demon to the child that was the one possessed Jesus Christ. And just casted out the demon. So when the man had left with his child, the apostles came back and said, Sir, why could we not cast him out? And that's where I got the prayer from. What is the prayer? When you have done everything you know to produce spiritual results through spiritual channel, you have fasted, you have prayed, you have confessed, you've sown seed, you've rejoiced, and nothing changed. Stop praying. What do you do? Stop praying. Go back to God. What do you say? God, I know you are faithful. God, I know you are kind. God, I know this is done. Where am I missing it? Show me what to do now. Show me how to pray. That's the prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry is not a prayer for God to do something. It's for God to reveal something and show you something. Because sometimes you may be attacking something here and meanwhile this is us. But when people have delay in prayer, instead of them to go to God in prayer of inquiry, they go to God in prayer of anger. Look at how you're looking at me. Do you want to embarrass me? Are you not a faithful God? We start to keep on saving you. That's not how you pray. You know why? There's no amount of threats that will make God change his mind. What is the prayer of inquiry? This is a very powerful concept. You go to God in prayer. And this is why you're fasting. In this place of inquiry, you say, Father, forget what I'm asking for. Just me and you. And say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, show me light, give me light, illuminate my mind concerning this issue. And I'll give you, you know, 
very powerful testimony about the prayer of inquiry. Sometimes when you pray, this is what you find out. That what you are praying about is not what you should be praying about. A woman was praying because she wanted a job. So she was praying that the Lord, she thought that the person, the main interviewer was against her. And she was praying that God would change his mind. So she was praying that, Father, this interviewer that is so hard and is restrictive will change his mind in Jesus' name. But as she prayed, the mind was not changed. So she learned about the prayer of inquiry and went to pray. And God showed her what was behind the scene. She thought it was the main interviewer that was against her. She did not realize that the main interviewer wanted to recruit her to her position. But the chairman of the company had a candidate and was putting pressure on him to recruit his candidate. And the main interviewer was trying to manage it. In our own prayer, Father, change the mind of the main interviewer. There's nothing to change. So the prayer is a spiritual foul and is ineffective. But as she prayed the prayer of inquiry and the light of heaven came, she saw that I should not be praying about the main person. I should be praying that whoever is blocking my process, that the Lord should intercept. That's why Romans 8 says that when we pray, we have limitations. You know what I'm talking about? He says when we pray, Romans chapter 8, let's look at that quickly. Oh, glory to God. You are praying for your child, you are praying for your child. This is why we fast though, because we want to get clarity. Romans chapter 8. You do the first investment, Olule. You do the second investment, Olule. You do the second investment, you cry. <laughs> what do you do? You go to God in prayer. Father, what is happening? The reason why is that there are dynamics that the human mind cannot comprehend. But the Bible says that thy word is light. It says, he that followed me, he says, he that, he says, I'm the light of the world. He that followed me will not stumble in darkness. That means that instead of me to fall, I will see. Your prayer becomes more effective when you see, sir. Yes. Are you getting me? Your yes. prayer becomes, when you see your prayer, because you know how to pray. There's a guy I know, he just keeps choosing the wrong people to marry. Ah, very good guy. Always choosing the wrong people to marry. As I was praying to him one day, I just saw it. It was the way it was raised. The way it was raised, it was bent. And because he was raised in a bent way, he chooses bent choices. I went to pray for a man. This was a long time ago. Long, maybe 15 years ago. In Bagada. The man was very sick. I went that time. I went to Pastor Lake. As I got there to pray, because I church remember the fact that I prayed for my dad. He's really dying. As I laid hands on him, I felt the power of God like electricity flow through my hands into his body. I said, thank you, Jesus. And as he touched him, I saw the power flow back into my hands. I said, ah, I just withdrew my hands. As I touched him, I just withdrew him. I just said, thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. So the pastor with me, Pastor Luke, said, Pastor Malaji, why didn't you pray for the man? You just said, thank you. I said, because he's going to die. He said, how do you know? I said, the power flowed and came back. That means the power did not work in his body. And when that happens, I've learned over time that the reason why the power returns just the way it comes is because spiritual laws have been activated that cannot be stopped right now. I learned that from Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin said he went to pray for a man. And as he went to pray for the man, the Lord said, no need to pray, he's going to die. He said, why will he die? He said, the man, the man was 40 years old. He said, ask his wife. The man had always said, since they married at their early 20s, I will die at 40. My father died at 40. My brother died at 40. My father at 40. He said, I know I will die at 40. So I'm preparing, I'm working hard so that when I die, you can enjoy life. So when can Egan go there? The reason, because you will not be saying, ah, oh, the attack of the, no, no, it's not the attack. This person has spoken words and the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Some of you that are single here, the warfare you carry is from your mother. And she didn't do it intentionally. She just looked at her and said, no man can marry you. I'm telling you, she would say, no man can marry you. And now you are older. That thing rings in your mind. When someone breaks up with you, and my mother said this. You have that thing. Some of you can't even remember it. And even when your mother said it, she didn't mean it. But when she said it, she opened a spiritual portal in which the demonic spirit put his foothold there. Some even fathers will say, I know you can't make it in life. And every time, 
you will, that feeling that you can't marry, no one wants to marry, where did you get it from? It was because of what was said into you. Sometimes you don't know when the seed is sown because the Bible says when the men sleep, the sower, the enemy came and sowed the seed. But when you see the fruit of the seed, it shows what seed was sown in your heart. And you must be careful of seeds, sir. There are many of you here, you are taking care of people that are very sick. Be careful when you take care of people that are very sick. You know why? In taking care of them, the seed of sickness can enter your heart. That's why I want to say to you, maybe you should have time, go back to the message I preached online about two or three weeks ago on spiritual warfare. Because many of you are just, listen, the Bible says, when men slept, the enemy came and sowed seed. What does that mean? When men were in their most vulnerable state, they were playing, they were not conscious, that was when the enemy sowed seed. And the seeds are words and thoughts and pictures. Glory to God. I was trying to show you a scripture, right? Romans chapter 8. About how we need to respond. The Bible says this, Romans chapter 8. Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmity, or the one infirmity that is Old English. The New English will say the Spirit helps our limitations. Why? See what it says. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Can you put on the screen, please? Romans chapter 8 verse 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps our limitations. He says, see what it says. For we know not what we should pray for as what? Listen to what he says. He didn't say we don't know what to pray for. Is that what he said? No. He says we do not know what to pray for as we ought. That means the details and the insight that will make the prayer potent and effective. Make it piercing and dynamic in nature. We do not have those depths. He says, so what the spirit does to help us is this. The spirit himself now makes up the gap by making intercession for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's close. John chapter 5. The Bible says this. In verse 5. And a certain man was there at the pool of Bethesda. I'm just giving you context. Which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. And Jesus saw him lie there. And knew he had been there for such a long time. In that case. And I want to explain why people stay in the case for a long time. Because... I'm just going to, in the first service and second service, I will make declarations and lead in prayers. Then maybe in the third service we'll have time, just because of time we'll have to close for the next one to minister the Spirit of God. All right. So he says this, this is why I posted this, he said that a certain man was there and he had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. And Jesus saw him lie there and knew he had now, he had been there, for, he had been there now a long time in that case. And Jesus went to help him. What did he do? And he said this. He says, Will thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man. The major reason why people stay in the case for a long time is this. Number one, their mindset becomes negative. So you hear them say things like this. And you hear them say, this, I can never do it in Nigeria. I want to ask you, Jesus that sent the angel to the pool came to the person and said, excuse me, sir, do you want to be made whole? Is the answer no yes or no? Is that no yes or no answer? What did he say? I have no man. Sometimes you ask a lady, do you want to get married? He said, that, will I marry myself? You don't understand. And that's why they are stuck there. That's why they are stuck there. Sometimes you talk to a businessman that what's the next thing for your business? He's saying, think is in this country. Can someone have a next thing? The reason why is that the problem has stayed for such a long time, they have become negative. Uh, have you not seen people that you tell them, join next level, they say, there's no point. As if they have another God somewhere else. And the reason why is that they become negative. So you've come to church today. 
Yeah, I've come. You know God will bless people, but you don't think He will bless you. See, a lot of people know that God will do it for people, but they never think I am the one. And until you put a number on yourself, heaven cannot number you. You must have to declare. Give me look on. You must be able to declare. You must have to declare and say that. Listen to me. Even if I want me in this meeting, God will start from me. It, it's a mindset you must have. That I'm the one. Don't because you stayed there for such a long time become negative about your challenges. Rather, let your mind be open that this is it. Are you believing God for some kind of approval? This is your moment. Are you believing for some kind of funding? This is your moment. See, this is what you must realize. My coming to the Antosian Church is very prophetic. Because we've been trying to organize this for one and a half years. I've just not been able to have the time to come. So, I believe that I came because God sent me to someone in this place. The question is that, are you going to take it? Are you going to receive it? Is this your moment? Stand on your feet and shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Say with me, say grace. Say grace. Say grace. grace. This is my story. Say grace. Say grace. Say grace. This is my story. Say grace. 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 This is my story. Whatever you desire from the Lord, go ahead and ask Him now. Go ahead and ask Him now. Go ahead and ask Him now. Yes, go ahead and ask Him now. Go ahead and ask Him now. Whatever I desire, go ahead and ask Him now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Paraba Kumba La Shekete. Let men the go se party. Then Ragata. Let man skip rate casuze bracadanda. Le praketa shabanante. Le brante sebante cabaratella manta. Shabarabate. Sonske para. Go ahead and ask it now. Thank you, Jesus. Zizike patani mante. Le resuza. Le manto kaba shamba hoya. Le man sambana kabaya. All of you online. Go ahead and ask it now. Shabalabarabarabahasata. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. So intelligent. Le greso pretek. Shule betida. La brakata branta kabaya. Le brante kaba shabarabababa manta. Le brante le regeton roba hasata. Entelebere. in Jesus' name we pray. Let man do cut back Zizo Baleto Monoma Kahaya. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2. Isaiah. Do you have a problem with your leg, man? What is wrong? You can't walk, or what is wrong with it? You can't stand for a long time. The Lord is touching you already. Yeah. You do my fix. You do glorious things. Not just leave them. Faithful God of my faith. Do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my faith. Look. Now, heaven, look down, 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 down.
Jesus you can see that's a miracle right there that lady that came where's the lady that came with a saw in the leg where are you how long have you had the wound in your leg Set, what four years four years that wound has been there for four years God's power has touched you right now Yes. In seven days, that wound will be totally dried up. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm so much behind time. Can I just pray for you? Either you're watching online or you're in the physical center. If you need a healing in your body, this is your moment. If you want an approval, this is your moment. Right now, I declare. Oh, yes, based on the authority of the name of Jesus, on the finished work of Calvary, I repeat every work of darkness every work of darkness causing sickness every work of darkness causing manipulation every work of darkness causing delay every work of darkness causing pain and heartbreak in the name of Jesus be gone right now in the name of Jesus receive your testimony right now in the name of Jesus receive your request in the name of Jesus Thank you, Lord. How do you feel, man? Tell me. Give her the microphone. Can you turn I on this mic? Yes. I said I feel much better. Praise God. I can't believe it. Praise God. I can't believe it. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Miracles are taking place right now. Lumps. A lady has a lump in her breast. It's gone in Jesus' name someone has a problem with your shoulder region towards your neck you are healed in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you lord jesus a chest condition i've been healed by the power of the holy ghost i see someone there's an agency that owns there's an institution that owns you money and they are paying back in jesus name thank you jesus glory to god glory to god glory to god i see a lady there's a problem around your marriage it's a family thing they, you have someone but there seems to be disagreement and the lord is sorting that right now for you in jesus name Thank you, Jesus. That person that has a problem in the internal part, I command to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Have you received it? This is what I want you to do. Take note of my words. Don't pray right now. Lift up your hands and thank him because it's done. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is what I want to do. If you're praying about your child, maybe having a child, Father, I thank you hold on don't pray just listen to me because finally i have gotten pregnant i have received my child not i will i have 
Thank you because that approval has come. If you are believing for healing, thank you, Lord, because my body is now strong. All the pain has disappeared. Thank you. Go ahead and thank him, everybody, right now. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and thank him. Thank him. Miracles are taking place online. All of you online, go ahead and thank him. 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 Oh, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. It is done. I want you to send me your testimonies. How do I know you have a testimony? Because I know it is done. It is done. Say it is done. Say this is my time. I have received. This is my time. This is my moment. I have received. Amen. God bless you. You can have your seats. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God.